Uh, I'd now like to introduce uh, Wanda Linz Lindsay from New Braunfels, Texas, who lost her husband, John. Good morning. <clears throat> my name is Wanda Lindsay. Three years ago today, <clears throat> my husband and I were rear-ended by a tractor trailer while we were stopped in a highway construction zone. We just happened to be the last car stopped in a long line of traffic about two miles long and a sitting target for the truck that braked only two or three seconds before he hit us. I lost consciousness and didn't see the complete destruction that day until I saw pictures of the crash site later. I was seriously injured, but thankfully I have recovered from most of my injuries. I will never fully recover from losing John. My husband of 46 years died from his extensive injuries two days after the crash. Later, I learned that that truck driver had been diagnosed with severe, uncontrolled sleep apnea about two months prior to the collision. Sleep apnea is a medical condition that causes chronic, debilitating fatigue, among many other serious health injuries. Yet this driver was still allowed to get behind the wheel of an 80,000-pound weapon which plowed over our car and five others, much like an oversized bowling ball knocking down pins. Our crash was my introduction to sleep apnea, truck driver fatigue, and the many other inherent dangers that we encounter as we travel along the nation's highways alongside these large trucks. Truck drivers are allowed 11 hours a day behind the wheel in a 14-hour workday. With such a physically punishing schedule, it is no wonder that 65% of the truck drivers report that they often or sometimes feel drowsy while, dri while driving, and nearly one half of the truck drivers admit that they have actually fallen asleep while driving in the previous year. We must take steps immediately to reduce this epidemic of truck driver fatigue. Nearly a year ago, my family and I celebrated the enactment of a law requiring electronic logging devices in trucks. Unfortunately, the Department of Transportation has yet to issue a rule to actually get these life-saving devices in the trucks. Every day that passes, lives are being lost unnecessarily. We urge the DOT to do its job and issue this final rule for electronic logging devices. Congress must also reject the special interest exemptions to the hours of service regulations. They compromise safety, erode uniformity, and weaken enforcement efforts. Not only are exemptions dangerous, but they also encourage the next industry to come knocking at the door to ask for their special exemption. So industry by industry, the exemptions will swallow up the rule, imperiling all on the roads. MAP 21 also requires an alcohol and controlled substances clearinghouse. Expedited and creation and careful oversight of this clearinghouse is essential, and we urge that it be expanded to include prescription drugs, particularly those that include drowsiness and fatigue as part of the side effects. To address the cause of my own crash as well as that of many others, I urge the DOT to begin rulemaking for sleep apnea screening to ensure that medical examiners are testing for and monitoring this widespread fatigue-producing condition. There is no way to bring back our loved ones as much as we would like to, but there are ways to prevent others from dying and suffering crippling injuries in truck crashes. Today, on this third anniversary of the crash that took my husband, I urge Congress to require DOT to begin rulemaking for sleep apnea screening, and I urge all of our elected officials to put safety before industry profits. Thank you. 